वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस टी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग पेपर लिंग्विस्टिक्स एंड इन इट मॉड्यूल नंबर ट्वेल्व डेरिवेशनल एंड इनफ्लेक्शनल मॉर्फोलॉजी इट हैज बीन रिटन बाय मिस अनिश्का अधिकारी हु इज एन इंडिपेंडेंट रिसर्चर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हैदराबाद in this particular module as we have already discussed what is morphology and what is the role of morphology in the linguistics and in this also before discussing these two types of morphology once again we will understand what is morphology so language is analyzed at various levels as maintained by many linguists language is analyzed at these levels like sounds that is phonetics and phonology words basically morphology structure that is syntax context that is pragmatics which just explains that meaning to you and that comes in the form of semantics now we are concerned in this module with morphology we know that morphology is the study of words but it studies the internal structure of the words and how they change their form to generate new words and the kinds of different roles they play in a sentence is strictly following the linguistic rules is being studied it is primarily concerned with the internal structure of words whether these be simple or complex words whether they contain grammatical information or have a purely lexical status morphology often referred to as grammar of words the set of rules which govern the words in a natural language and fundamental concept in morphology is that of lexeme a morpheme is the smallest meaningful grammatical unit of a language a morpheme may or may not be an independent identity if a morpheme can represent an independent meaning it is called a root if a morpheme can exist independently it is called a free morpheme like cat cat is a root which can exist independently but when we add s so this s on the other hand is the plural marker but on its own s has got no meaning to convey bound morphemes appear as a part of a word they have a meaning but they cannot exist independently on their own they are further classified into inflectional morpheme and derivational morpheme that we are going to discuss in this particular module now what is inflectional morphology inflectional morphology creates new forms of the same word whereby the new forms agree with the tense case voice aspect person number gender and the mood of an utterance inflection of verbs is called as conjugation whereas the inflection of nouns adjectives preposition adverbs and articles is called as declension inflected form of a word often contains both one or more free morphemes a unit of meaning which can stand by itself as a word and one or more bound morphemes that is a unit of meaning which cannot exist independently as a word now what is invariant words which never undergo the process of inflection are said to be invariant for example the english verb must is an invariant item it never takes a suffix or changes form to signify a different grammatical category must is must its categories can be determined only from its context for example you must put down your thoughts in writing it cannot be expressed it cannot be changed no prefix can uh, put in the in this particular sentence to change the form of the word must but if i say 
the must has been examined by the experts now it has been represented in a different way so in the first sentence must has been used as a verb you must put down so that is a verb the must has been examined in the second sentence must has been used as a noun now we were talking about prefix and suffixes how prefix and suffixes are important its study is important for morphology prefix is a bound morpheme which is added in the beginning of the word to create a new word a new form for example un un it is added before happy and generates another word unhappy which is different in meaning altogether different in meaning from the word happy which is the end, rather you can say it is the antonym of the word happy in the same way some more instances are in if i put in before justice so justice becomes injustice when a bound morpheme is attached to the end of the word that is suffix then such morphemes for example walk and i say i add ed it's walked the tense is changed just like prefixes and suffixes we have circumfix and infix a circumfix is another kind of an affix which attaches itself to the base and surrounds it for example en light en the word is enlighten light is the word but we have used en 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 and end also en so it is just a circumfix of a different kind and infix is an uncommon affix which is inserted within the root it is a characteristic feature of hip hop slang absolutely plus blooming and if we say absolutely we have created a different word out of the two word so we have seen that inflection has got two regular inflection and irregular inflection what is regular inflection regular inflection refers to those inflections which follow a standard pattern for example dance danced merge merged so after adding suffix we get regular inflection ed is phonologically conditioned and in other words the ending sound of the root decides the pronunciation of the past form of a particular verb it is either it will be pronounced as t d or id id if the final sound of the root is unvoiced then the suffix ed will be pronounced as t like hope if the final sound of the root is voiced sound then the suffix ed will be pronounced as d like judged if the final sound of the root is t or d then the suffix ed will be pronounced as id like handed s is also phonologically conditioned if the last consonant of the word is voiceless then the s is pronounced as s, cups cups cliffs and if the last letter of the words end in a voiced sound then the s is pronounced like a z like boys boys gems gems if the last letter of the word is a cbn then the s is pronounced like is roses bushes is but the word is r o s e s roses it's pronounced that is roses s is also phonologically conditioned and we have seen how it is conditioned and that tells us how to pronounce it correctly there comes the role of irregular inflection words with irregular inflections do not follow the previously mentioned regular patterns for example mouse become mice child becomes children so that is we cannot just put s or d or ed and change the word the word is all together changed one mouse is mouse more than one is mice one child is child and more than children this is known as irregular inflection then we have suppletion another process which occurs in inflection morphology what is it 
occurrence of phonemically unrelated allomorphs of a morpheme is called as suppletion. For example, when we say go and plus past tense ed, it, it is not goed but it becomes went. In the same way, good and the next degree with er in other cases but in this case becomes better. Now comes another thing that is derivational morphology. Derivational morphemes are affixes which are added to a lexeme to change its meaning or function. It involves two significant processes. One major difference which distinguishes inflectional morphology from derivational morphology is that the latter does not only change the form of a word, it also changes the category and the meaning of the word. One of them is affixation and the other one is compounding. Now what is compounding? Compounding occurs when two or more words are joined together to form a meaningful longer word. Like when we say scare, we say crow. These are two different words. But when we put a scare crow, it presents altogether a different meaning. When we say green, it's a color. When we say house, it's a different object. But when we say greenhouse, it's a altogether different object. In the same way, mate, servant becomes mate servant, bitter and sweet becomes bitter sweet. So there are so many compounding words which gives you one extra word uh, mixed or made out of two different words. It is also important to understand some semantic types related with morphology. That is endocentric compounds. An endocentric compound consists of a head whereby the meaning gets restricted to the head of the compound. For example, steamboat, blackboard, hairbrush, tablecloth, etc. Exocentric compound, there is a formal head but the meaning is not restricted to the head of the compound. The meaning generated is totally independent of the word formed. For example, that we discussed like a scare crow. It is neither a crow nor a scare. So it is not a like pickpocket. So it, nothing to do with that. A spoiled sport, nothing to relate with the sport but it's an independent word. In the series we have copulative compounds in a copulative compound words both the words are considered as head in other words they both contribute to the overall meaning of the compound word when we say poet doctor deaf mute etc appositional compounds is in another category and it is formed when two contrary characteristics define the meaning of the resultant compound. Like player coach, maid servant. They are maid is one, servant is another, but together it forms maid servant another word. We have noun, noun compounding and we have also have verb noun compounding. Noun noun compounding means when two or more nouns are combined together, the resultant compound word is also a noun. So noun is compounding and the result we are getting is also noun. How? Like keyboard. It is a noun. Keyboard. And what we are getting again is a, a noun. Keyboard. Dog house. Sunflower. Greenhouse. Etc. But it is not so in the case of the verb noun compounding. These kind of compound words are formed by the combination of a verb and its object. For example, rainfall, breakfast, pickpocket, etc. When we say breakfast, so somewhere it is a verb and then it is a noun. But what we get is another object. We also have just like noun noun compounding, we also have verb verb compounding. Verb verb compounds are formed as a result of sequencing of two verbs. A compound verb may also include a prepositional verb, phrasal verb, auxiliary with a verb. For example, oversee, backspace, wear away, etc. Adjective, adjective compound is also there. And in this case, two attributes are joined together to form a single idea. Like part time. Part is one, time is another and we get one part time. 
high speed, etc. Affixation. Linguistic processes in which prefixes, suffixes and circumfixes are added to a word to derive a new form out of it can be both infectional and derivational. For example, boy, boys, hop, hopping, hops, hopped. Productivity. Some affixes are more productive than the others. It is a relative phenomena. Some affixes are productive some are less and what are the various rules governing this process many linguists like matthews and anderson recognize the notion of semi-productivity this category consists of those idiosyncratic affixes which do not get attached to apparent eligible words not only this when such affixes are used then the resultant meaning of the word gets narrowed significantly there are certain constraints of productivity. The most common phenomena which provides a constraint for productivity is called as blocking. It happens due to some specific cementing phonological or morphological reasons like blacken, black plus en, blacken. We have phonological constraints in the case suffix en can be added to a word with ends within obstruent sound and morphological constraints are other affixes which are sensitive and words which take i z i suffix can be converted into a noun by adding another suffix a t i o n for example generalize general when we just put i z e generalize and then we can change it into generalization in the same way, capital, capitalize and then capitalization. So this is called morphological constraints. To conclude, we can compare the inflectional morphology and deviational morphology on your screen. You, uh, screen you can see that they do not change the grammatical category of the word that is inflectional morphology while derivational morphology in most of the instances derivation changes the grammatical category of the word inflectional are often used to contribute to the meaning of the word thus coining new words while derivational eventually lose their meaning as the new words have a distant resemblance to the meaning of the root inflectional tend to occur outside the derivational affixes while derivational have major chances of getting attached to the root. Inflectional provides syntactic information about the word or even a sentence and derivational it, their contribution is lexical restricted. To summarize, I would like to draw your attention towards words. Now, whenever you are going to study anything for that matter because we know that linguistics is not just one field linguistics it is surrounded by so many other things it is spread to so many other like we have sociolinguistics when we discuss about uh, social things we have psychological we have uh, it is in the field of anthropology psychology neurology compu computational linguistics we have so applied linguistics we have but all of these one thing is common that is morphology words study of words and when we discuss morphology then the for a general reader for a common reader it comes how do we coin these words in this module we have learned how to coin new words with the root word by adding prefixes suffixes and many other so in this way when we add prefixes we have different when we have suffixes we have different and there are some words in which we add both prefixes and suffixes like a beautiful word i given you enlighten so we have pref n as prefix and n as suffix both and enlighten is a beautiful word that is with us en is a separate word light is a separate word so how to make further words with the help of suffixes 
and prefixes that can be a very good exercise for our students to create new words to just learn new words with the help of the prefixes suffixes and other things thank you for visiting epg patshala